Well, before we start, any comments on chapter 10, the Good Shepherd chapter? Well, it's sure a comforting chapter. Yeah. No, he's a good shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. You know the other guys didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a demon. The guys, yeah, the guys that claimed he was insane. <laughs> they're always saying that. Yeah. He has a demon. Yeah. I think I don't think they're going to say it this time. They're just going to get really mad at it. <laughs> oh, we're moving on. Huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I want to. I want to read up through verse uh, 44 kind of breaks up there actually it's a whole continuous story but we'll break it into two sections so we'll start here on gospel of john chapter 11 unless somebody has something to say okay chapter 11 Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when, Laz- when, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming... She went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. 
Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary quickly rise, rise quickly, that is, and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved and his moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Okay. A lot there. The story goes on, but we'll start. We'll pick up there in the, in the second part. Comments, insights, observations. Well, when you're reading it, it just, it, I don't know, what stood out to me is the fact that Jesus looks at time differently than we do. I mean, he knew Lazarus was going to die, but <coughs> now it's not time for me to do anything. You know, he, he had a timetable that wasn't what we would consider the right way. Yeah. You know, go fix him before he dies. And No, he was he was going <coughs> a long time. You know, I am the resurrection of life. That's not, that's now and, you know, ongoing. It's not just Anyway, just just his, his concept of time is yeah, I think, really different than what we how we process things. But we know he could have we could have healed. Them. I mean, that's yeah. what he did with Peter's. <coughs> what I like his about life was, is because he went over there and he didn't he right. didn't wait for her to die. You know, he he yeah, healed he her. her. Yeah, she was healed immediately. Yeah, um, that his 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 heart was bothering him after feeling the lady's pain and suffering. And then he decided to bring him back to life right then, you know, because those girls touched him by crying, Mary and the other people that came there. Even though he knew he was going to be risen again, like she said, um, but he he felt it right then, and he talked to his father, you know, made it happen again, like he made the blind man see. He he he, he was, his word is his word. It's, strongest word in the world and he kept his word but it, at first I think he was trying to just show them that their their faith is what's going to bring things back around but they had little faith for him not being there and like he he let his buddy go you know when she did it he would he had a, he had a mission in his mind he knew what he was doing but then when he got got back home the girls touched him even more to bring him to life. Yeah, he obviously had a plan or he wouldn't exactly. have waited two more days. <laughs> yeah. And then when he got there, he made a point of when he's praying, you know, I, I'm saying this because these people are around me so they'll see and believe, yeah, you know. Right. So, I mean, he had a plan. Yeah, because if, if he was there to heal them, they still wouldn't believe him, you know. Mm -hmm. so, like Gary said, he brought him back there. That was his plan, bringing him back to life or resurrecting him. 
But Before they can believe them. Um, but <clears throat> kind of going back, you know, in, in, I think he was talking about that because he talks about let's go back to um, Judea. And they said, well, they were just trying to kill you there. <coughs> and he says, but you walk in the light. And it's like the kingdom of God operates this way. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Yeah. If I'm walking in the light, what the kingdom's doing, it don't matter what anybody else is doing. Yeah. You know, and I mean, that's what I think he, kind of what he's saying here is, look, he sees, you know, he does not stumble because he sees the light of day. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. And it's like, it's like I operate in God's kingdom and his order and his light. And it doesn't matter whether they want to kill me there or that. If God's telling me to go there, I go there. Yeah, I've done my way before. Yeah, but it's just, it, it's interesting how he, he says it. You know, it's just, it's and, not an issue. I'm going to go there. And obviously, for the reason that he waited, he says right there, it is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Right. So it wasn't just to go do a good deed. There was a purpose behind behind it. Yeah. God, God has his way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. He's going to do it that way. And help us on, on see it. <laughs> and what that like is in around the same area as um it said, but Jesus um heard it and said, This is this illness does not lead to death. So he gives him a promise. This is not a this is not a death issue. And then so so many times they realize that we will get a word from God or something from God, a guarantee of his word, and it doesn't come to pass right away. Within God we know this these situations coming up is very dire situation, you need to do something now, like you were saying, you know, God's time is not our timing. And so, you know, you have to learn to trust his word. If he says something, it's going to come to pass, no matter what it is. And um, just knowing that however long it takes, whatever God is doing in the midst of that, um, his word will come to pass. We just have to trust it and believe it. Regardless of what the circumstances look like, things in our lives can seem to be dead and not prospering but God's like no that's not that's not what I told you don't walk by sight yeah walk by faith no yeah. by yeah we just heard that on Sunday yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like Thomas's response well let, let us go that we may die with him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> he Thomas gets a bad rap because he's the one who doubted Jesus yeah. Yeah. but he's the one that was willing to go and die for him here at this point yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's an interesting response to what's yeah. going on. Wait, let's oh, go now. Let's just this, this is all we'll die. Yeah. It's like the three musketeers, huh? <laughs> Mary, he kind of, John kind of says it in passing. It says it was Mary who anointed the Lord with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair. She was... Lazarus's sister, and that's the Mary we know as as Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. according to Luke. And yeah. Luke says refers to her as a woman that lead led a sinful life. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean she was necessarily a prostitute. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they called her all the way down. But there's, I don't think there's anything in the scripture that said she was a prostitute, but yeah. she lived a sinful life. I mean, maybe she. Maybe she drank and cussed like a sailor. Who knows? You know? <laughs> but uh, whatever it was. We know one thing is she was wealthy. Because that... Oh, she took her energy. Yeah, and then later, because she... Well, the anointment itself the was anointment worth a year. In an alabaster just... jar. And then, <clears throat> oh, that's right, that and then nice. later in the next chapter, she anoints his feet again. In 12. And... And it was that, and that one was the one that was worth a year's wages. And that's one that Judas complains about. Right. It's the same Mary. So I'm yeah. thinking, she's, she was pretty wealthy. Yeah. So, and, yes. but in Luke, she says that she was a sinner. It's like, you know, the, the Pharisees are saying, yeah. does he know what kind of woman this is, you know? Right, right. And uh, uh, so, I don't know, maybe in prostitution or, or maybe she was just Ill, Ill reputed. But she was wealthy, one way or the other. I mean, she was just mean and ornery. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <they laughs> beat, beat up people for her money, who knows? Yeah. 
Good with finances. <laughs> Go bust his kneecaps. He didn't pay me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this, well, I'm switching gears a little bit here. His statement, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, though he dies, yet shall he live. Yeah. Right. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And I, I think that's a phenomenal statement because it's like, he's saying I'm, I'm the supernatural life. Whether you die physically or not, I'm the supernatural life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know, that's, there's a lot to that. He's, retur he's redefining the, the idea of what it is to live. Mm -hmm. But it's real right. life. That's right. Right. That's a yeah, good way yeah. to put it. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, this is going to go. Yeah. That's not what he's talking about, though, right. obviously. Another I am also. A lot, of, mm -hmm. a lot of I am's. And here I am, the resurrection and the life. Yeah, I have, I have hope with exclamation mark next to whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. That's, that's a great promise to cling on to. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think people who who don't realize the truth of that statement is they live in a certain amount of fear. That's why they. That's why they're afraid to die. You know what I mean? Because they don't know what's beyond that. Well, they don't. Yeah, yeah they don't. Where, that. where to us, our hope is: we know I, I die to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, especially since I mean, in their society, in their lifestyle, if the church kicked you out, you were condemned. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And even the church today sometimes condemns people that God gives them resurrection life. You know, because it's not based on us. It's based on him. He is the resurrection of life. Yeah. And that's, a, that's like you said, hope. That's a great word for it. Because it's like... Yeah, in another place he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. So, I mean, he's still the life that, yeah. you're talk, that you're referring to. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, maybe it was back in the... Uh, I like the part where he, where she says, "Lord, he who you love is ill." Uh, she sent word to him because somehow somehow he's somewhere else, and he finds this out and then travels too. So somehow she sent some kind of uh, we were talking about messaging messaging a while back on how long it took to get somewhere. So who? Who knows how long it took for them to get to the point where Jesus waited two more days? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Hmm. But the the he whom you love is ill. So obviously Jesus knew Lazarus. This wasn't the first time he had ever met him. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, he hadn't met him up to that point if he never knew him because he was dead by the time he got there. I thought it said, I thought it said somewhere where he looked. And, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, Lord, who, he whom you love is ill. Yeah. That, you know, so he, he didn't know him as far as, <coughs> as far as that statement. But I love the way he shows his humanity. You know, it's Jesus wept. I mean, he wasn't afraid to do that in public for this guy. Yeah, it says that that he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled, Jesus. And then the shortest verse in the whole Bible is Jesus wept. And then in verse 38, Jesus is deeply moved again when he went to the tomb. So he, he certainly had a heart of compassion and expressed it through his body, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, if he knew that he's gonna raise from the dead, you think, I don't know, raise from the dead, so why, why, why get all emotional about it? 
But you're right, he felt the pain that they were feeling. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see Jesus' side of things, like when he healed the leper that came to him, you know, and to see him healed right in front, the response of the person you just healed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When they went from leper to not a leper right in front of you, and the joy that was in that guy's heart, to see Jesus respond to that, you know, that's, that's why I would have liked to have been around and seen Jesus, mm -hmm. seen his mannerisms, the way he spoke and the way he moved his hands, you know. One day we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One day we'll see. Well, and, you know, how did they, you know, they wrote this deeply moved in the spirit and greatly troubled. But, you know, how did they observe that? You know, what, what did that look like? Yeah, well, obviously. What, what you're saying, you know, what... Mm -hmm. What's that? What's that look like? It was Jesus? obviously displayed. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also shown us that that's acceptable for us to do. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's not. You know, that's a. It's a. It's a connection. Yeah. You know, you go to a funeral and somebody's grieving. You don't walk up to them and say, "Hey, you should be happy. They're in heaven right now." <laughs> well, <laughs> come on now. Jesus, Jesus was deeply moved and. And cried. And greatly troubled. Me. So don't bother me. Yeah. Of course, I like the way he ended it. He raised him from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did kind of have a great finale. <laughs> Let's see here. And I like I, I didn't write it down, but I think think the King James where where Martha when she says, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and here it says we'll be in order. He stinketh. He stinketh. Wind's blowing the wrong way today. <laughs> I can you imagine being there though and seeing this roll away the stone and then seeing this guy he probably just kind of you know did this kind of walk you know what I mean because he's all wrapped up yeah, yeah. yeah face and everything I wonder if he could even get up yeah, yeah. they wrap him so much yeah. you know, fall and roll I mean I mean you know could he even out. could he even rock off whatever he's on <laughs> yeah. But well, can you imagine though being there and seeing that just slowly come out of there. That would have been something. Yeah. Yeah, because you know he just he just or he doesn't know where he's at. He's he's alive one day and this new he's, he's dead and like okay, it's, it's dark. I'm hearing voice, but I can't see Lord, what's going on. Here. I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girls, this is not funny. <laughs> well, obviously, too. When the, after Jesus wept, and the Jews said, "See how he loved him." So I mean, that just goes to show that what, he was a good, probably a good <coughs> friend of Lazarus. Yeah. yeah, it was obvious everybody else saw his compassion. And yeah, his, right. His connection with this guy. But I like that last line before he raises Jesus because they say, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? And then all of a sudden, Lazarus, come out. Yeah. 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 He did a little more than he would keep him from dying. He yeah. brought him back from the dead. Yeah. 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 Now what are you guys going to say? Yeah. <laughs> you know... Uh, I heard somebody preach about this the last uh, sentence there. It says, unbind him and let him go. And they said, well, you know, we need each other to unbind, help unbind each other. Mm -hmm. I can't undo my mind. mind yeah, true. You know, yeah. You're bound up in death cloth. You, you need somebody to help you. Talk about your hands being tied. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was a good description. His, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. It'd be quite a sight. Yeah. yeah I kind of wonder what's going through Jesus' mind because 
he knows he's God, and he knows all this, and you know, he can do whatever he wants to do. <clears throat> but if he's raising him from the dead, I'm thinking, if I knew it was going to happen and I had that power, I'm like, okay, raise from the dead, no big deal. But he's so emotional about it. What was he experiencing? It was like, okay, I know God can do this because he said he's going to do it. I heard from him. He's going to raise him. What was the excitement of seeing God do that, raising his friend from the dead? That, I, mean, I just wonder what was going through his mind. Because yes, we know who he is, but he still had the same emotions attached to that. Yeah. So I was wondering, you know, what was he thinking at that time? I mean, he wasn't shocked that God did it, but you know, I'm just saying, as a human being, why those emotions? I, mean, I know why the emotions, but you know, being Jesus. Yeah. You yeah, have to process both sides of that. Yeah. yeah. Now, wasn't it, it's not mentioned here, and I don't, off the top of my head, I just thought about this. Wasn't Mary and Martha involved in another time where Either Martha said about Mary, you know, she's not doing nothing, she's not helping. Well, you're right, you're sitting Jesus at his feet. Right. Yeah, and, feet. Feet. Yeah, and then, then Jesus says she has chose the better yeah. thing, yeah. you know. And that was Mary and Martha too, was it not? Yeah. 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 John missed that part on this. <laughs> no, it's in here somewhere. He just have not got to it all the time. Maybe another instance, yeah. Or it's in one of the other Gospels. I'd. I don't remember where I had read it, but... No, no, it's... Yeah, I think it's... Uh, yeah. Okay. Any more comments yeah, or observations? I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So that's a demonstration of the glory of God. And that was a question. Yeah. Yeah, he was... He, says, he, he wasn't making a statement. He was ask, asking, actually asking them a question. Well, he's, he's helping them recognize what it was. Right. Yeah. That's called, nowadays we would say, I told you so. <laughs> yeah. He's nicer than that. Yeah. He, he's not talking to the Pharisees, obviously, at this point. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, no stones around. No stones. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's not called a demon. Not yet, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knows I'm a demon. <laughs> I think we got stones coming up though. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, you know, it's so nice that he, he explains that so we know that that it's a communication between him and the Father. And, and he was making a point to the crowd, you know. Yeah. He was wanting them to see. Yeah. You know, if you're a Pharisee or Sadducee, what do you say to something like that? This guy was wrapped up and dead for four days. Yeah. And he tells them to come out and he walks out. Now, how, how are you going to overcome that? And then he says it's the glory of God that did it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> it seems like that help you start re reevaluating your theology. Yeah. They, well, they didn't. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of the church still has a problem with it. Well, that's true. I mean, that's why I did it, so we would learn. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see what happens when we move on here. Verse uh, 45. The plot to kill Jesus. Again. Again, <laughs> again, yeah. <laughs> Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. 
But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. Jesus therefore no longer walked openly among the Jews, but when, but went from there to the region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim, and there he stayed with, his, with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he should let them know so that they might arrest him. Okay. I think it's interesting what they, they say their fears are. First of all, everyone will believe in him. Yeah. And the Romans will come and take away our place mm -hmm. in our nation. Yeah. Our place. And, and where did that come from? Well, I mean, you know, come on. I've got a nice place in the palace and I get money. And people keep bringing it. Not in the palace, in the, in the sanctuary. So they don't want to give those to us. And that's not a, that's not going to happen just because people believe in them. I th I think they were just like really stretching it right there. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you think he's he's a different religion, they're not going to come. They're not going to pay tithes to the temple. They're not going to give us stuff because they're going to follow him. So in their mind, yeah, there that been, was the end of, of their. There could have been something routine. behind that, I guess. Yeah, I see. Well, I, I see mean, that. I mean, will I go to the temple and give them money when he's healing people? Yeah, right. <laughs> he's my healer. <laughs> Not you guys. But that's, you know, that was their fears. It's interesting how it says, though, he did not say of his own accord. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but also together. And to one of the children of God who are scattered abroad. And we Gentiles thank God for that verse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how he prophesied that. You know, he's saying it thinking he understands what he's saying. But he really doesn't know the ramifications. Of right, really yeah. Saying. He's thinking, well, we're going to take care of this problem now. We're he, done with this. He's like the donkey talking there. You know, <laughs> man, you just you just opened up the door, old buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And there was two priests. Evidently, one they were father and son. Annas and Caiaphas. They were the, they were the chief priests. At this, at least at this point, and then, and then that's the one where, when Jesus gave an answer that they didn't like, that he got, they hit him. They, they struck him. Yeah. I bet they were shaking in the booth when they saw Lazarus. You know, if the story of Lazarus got out. Mm -hmm. so. You know, oh yeah. You know what are we gonna do? Well, they said, "What are we gonna do?" This guy performs many signs. Yeah. So I mean, they talk about blind. I mean, they saw the signs. Still would not believe. I guess that's kind of human nature. Till God opens your eyes, you are blind to that. Yeah. Well, I just I just looking at my notes here. Was something interesting on, on uh, 1140 to uh, 48. 
It says the Jewish leaders knew that if they didn't stop Jesus, the Romans would discipline them. Romans gave partial freedoms to the Jews as long as they were quiet and obedient. Jesus' miracles often caused a disturbance. The leaders feared the Romans' di displeasure would bring them additional hardship to their nation. This is what my, my so if they had that view, I guess they would be concerned about yeah. that that stuff. Yeah. So that they would be afraid that they would come and take away both our place and our nation. I get. I get it. I get that. They say we're not bonding <coughs> slaves to anyone. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. right. This year, like, oh, yeah, yes, well, we just are. like the last chapter of the one before, uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. We've never been in bondage. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, sounds like it right there in that yeah. little footnote. Mm -hmm. It's like the man, um, when, they, when they came to Jesus, said, Now, what must I do to, for salvation? And um, they have a new life for every, how he quoted it. And uh, he said, Well, sell all your goods and, and come follow me. And because of the pull of the world and the worldly things, he didn't want to give that up right. for life. And say to the Pharisees, you know, life is right there waiting for you. You just had to get rid of, let go of the things. They could have still kept the positions, just live your life right as God's called you to. Because he called you to that position. But they weren't willing to give up the power and all the corruption that they did for true riches. It's really sad. Yeah, that guy that you're talking about, I don't remember exactly how it's worded, but when he asked that, Jesus started giving us, he says, we need to do this. Yeah, okay, I've done that. Mm -hmm. We need to do this. Okay, yeah, I've done that. He's like going, oh, yeah, I'm in there. <laughs> now sell all that you have and come follow me. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, yeah, nothing wrong with that out. <laughs> but now I look for my own life, and I have to ask myself in light of these scriptures, mm -hmm. What thing am I holding on to that prevented me from having more of abundant life in Christ? Yeah, I think it's what's helped me with that a lot is, is a buddy mine says, I hold nothing tightly. Yeah. You know, I'm given a lot, but it's not mine. Mm -hmm. I'm a steward. I've been given it, but it's his. Yeah. So if he wants mm -hmm. it, he can have it, you know, but it, it's... He really wants our heart. I don't mm -hmm. think he has a problem giving us things. Yeah. That's not the issue. It's, it's the way I deal with the things. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about the Roman thing. Because the Romans did have a lot of influence for mm -hmm. the Jews. The Jews are always trying to... <coughs> Make sure that Romans are happy. Yeah, I just, I mean, like, when you were talking about it, I said, well, what, what about it? And it's our footnote right there. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But they, they definitely made sure that they didn't rile the Romans up, you know. And so, like, every time Jesus did something, I'm thinking that first he'd always send some people out there to see what he's doing. Because here it says, no. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So, like, there's always snitches around. <laughs> <laughs> to say, well, hey, he's doing this now. It's like, <laughs> I just, I just glance over the ch chapter twelve. That that's the other story that we had talked about earlier. You had mentioned yeah. this, yeah. That's coming up next. Yeah. So, I, I, I did too. I read some about that too. Then they want. Then they want to go. Now they want to kill Lazarus. So yeah. That'll be coming up too. <laughs> it's to like they have done that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bury this story <laughs> but that was another thing you know you talk about the tomb that was, wasn't his tomb there's many bodies in that tomb besides him mm. oh okay and that's what it was, that was in my footnotes too so that order had to be pretty strong mm -hmm. yeah I, I've heard these oh things. okay Lazarus too okay. yeah, yeah that's one said before that he had to call out Lazarus name specifically because he just said just come out right <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. not you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. everybody else going back to being dead everybody stay dead just Lazarus come out oh man I'm so <laughs> cold <laughs> oh man <laughs> Everybody else stayed dead. 
Yeah, because first what I was thinking about is the tomb. I go, well, how many holes do they have in there for everybody? And then I, and I started reading down there, like, oh, they had many bodies in that tomb. Oh, really? So it was kind of like a the city burial tomb. Mass grave. Yeah, mass grave. Wow, I never, I never heard that. <laughs> That's yeah, where was it? Let me see. It says, uh, yeah, the tomb at the time were usually a cave carved in limestone of a hillside, a tomb was often large enough for people to walk inside. Several bodies would be placed in one tomb. After burial, a large stone would roll across the entrance of the tomb. It, 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 uh, verse 54 you know Jesus therefore no longer walked openly among the Jews so there was a change in yeah. in his approach now yeah because he, he could that. have if he wanted if he but, wanted but he, yeah he purposely it says that you know he yeah no longer openly walked among them because I guess that that attitude was so strong and he wasn't free to minister like he was or had been I should say. Hmm. Yeah, it's like he he had uh, what's I don't know, know how to word it, but he had wisdom. You know what I mean? He wasn't just going out there knowing somebody can kill him and he can escape at any time. I mean, because obviously he he's escaped death more oh, yeah. than once prior to that. He could do it again if it's not his time. But yet he still, with wisdom, yeah. withdrew and didn't, and no longer went out, um, you know, yeah. he didn't amongst the a, people. You know, he didn't have a receptive crowd at this point, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't walking about yeah, haphazardly, you know. Yeah, all around the Swiss around them. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All right. But that's the that's a good um, a thing for discernment that they were always to be walking this and always praying, so God can talk to us about situations like, hey, oh, don't go this direction, don't go that, don't don't go this way, don't go that way, because we don't know what's coming up, but He does. Right. So yeah, it's always good to pray often, even just having a conversation, which is real prayer, just having a conversation. I remember a story when I was um, UPS driver, I was. Uh, uh, driving the truck and there's some road construction going somewhere. I'm like, I can just go this direction and get by. And God's like, no, 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 that way. If you go that way, you can get stuck. I'm like, there's no one there. I can go. And I'm like, well, I'll just trust it. And the other direction, sure enough, I had gone there and been stuck in traffic hmm. for like about an hour or so. So I'm like, yeah. So just hearing that small, still voice and saying, yeah, go this direction. Okay. Yeah. But it you know, reminds me of that verse. He says, don't cast your pearl before swine. You know, there's people that their attitude or, or the they're not open. Yeah. So you're wasting your time mm -hmm. to talk to them. You know, it's just, it's not, there's going to be no profit. Yeah. It's not a good time. It's not, they're not in that open place. So don't, don't say, you know, be quiet. Mm hmm Yeah, I think that that's good, but at the same time, we, we need that's where why we need to be attentive because yeah, otherwise we can waste all our time. Like, you know, oh, yeah. well, you gotta have the balance, yeah. You gotta be able you gotta hear the Lord say, you know, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen right here or right now, yeah, 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 you know, because otherwise we get ourselves. And I've been in that place many times. Is when you're talking to people, you start to get frustrated because they're not hearing anything yeah. you're having to say, or right. they're countering everything you say with something else. And there's a place for that, I think, because Paul did it when he was in Rome with all the philosophers. You know, mm -hmm. Mars Hill. He went mm -hmm. out and he went out and, and talked to them, and discussed all this stuff. But uh, it's got to be, that's where you got to hear the Lord saying, stay in there or get out. Yeah. Yeah. Either keep the gloves on or take them off. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> or throw the last punch and move on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bob <Yeah. laughs> and <Long> weave. <laughs> So now they're at the Passover. A lot of people there, and they're standing around. Well, what do you think? I can imagine the talk that must have been going on, especially if they had been there to see what happened the, with Lazarus. I don't know. Does it say how big the crowd was that was there? Does it mention at all? Give us any hint. Uh, Lazarus too. Is yeah, and when, when Jesus rose him, I mean, it didn't sound like a huge amount. Uh, the mourners. It just says the Jews said. Mm. And some of them. And there's no numbers. Uh, actually, Daryl, just to your comment earlier, but it, says, it does say in verse 38 that it was a cave and a stone lay against it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say, it just said that Jesus just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I thank you that you have heard me. I know you always hear me, and I say of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. So we don't know how big the entourage was there, but however many was there, it stirred something up because that's when the plot started to thicken yeah yeah but now they're serious and even the pr chief priests and pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was he should let them know so they might arrest him so they're getting serious now yeah. well picking up stones is pretty serious too i guess like we've seen previously. I guess they figured out that didn't work, so now they're going to run. Yeah, that ain't. <laughs> Jesus, he slips away. He's slippery. He's a slippery dude. It's, it's too, it kind of reminds you of Judas, you know, because they put this word out, and you know, Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he was to report it so that they might seize it. So this was, you know, this was the Passover. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it says Jesus it was the Passover. The, the, the Last Supper, and, and this was the, the time that that happened. So it's... Actually, they, yeah, that's later. That's that comes later? later on. Yeah, that's the later one, because they, they, he's still yet to walk through the, the vineyard and, you know, John 15. Right, but I mean, it's... This is where he does the... the the Palm Sunday, where he comes in and they say, this is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And John, oh, yeah, and John 12? Or you're, where where are entry? you reading from? Yeah, triumphal entry there. 12? Jesus oh, 12. 12, 12. 12 yeah. the next day so it right? would have been a week before then, yeah. Yeah, so this is that same Passover. Time. Yeah, actually from the chapter from this point on is the last week of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this I see your point, yes. It was like Judas was kind of uh had this in his mind, I guess you know, that but the the word was out. And so if it, even if it wasn't Judas, there was they had the word out that, that they were ready to send the, the guard the troops out to capture him. So like they did in the garden. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, if there's a Passover here, there must have been some time elapsed here in between these chapters because when Jesus died on the Passover, so, oh, it says it was at hand. Yeah, it yeah, it was, yeah. It, they knew it was Passover coming, it was coming up. Coming okay, up. Yeah. got it. Okay, yeah, now I'm tracking. But they were, yeah, they were sending, they were going to send the troops you know, if anyone would, through. so it's kind of like Jesus was on a timetable. He wanted to, you know, whether it was conscious or I believe it was that he was to die at Passover. 
and everything is to coincide with all the events happening in the temple with the, the Passover and everything. And uh, he was fulfilling those, you know, everything he did was fulfilling those prophecies. So it was kind of like he, that's kind of why he, in a sense, laid low, I would assume. Um, like you said, he could, he could have, he always escaped their hand. He always would have. But this was this was more of a serious thing where they were ready, they were ready to send the troops to you know, to capture him if they if they could nail down where he was. Yeah, and this is the time where he's spending a lot with his disciples. Mm -hmm. I think it's the last coming to the last right. week of his life, and he's like he's pouring out yeah, to them. Yeah, he's filling them up. Good point. Okay. Well, unless someone else has something else to, they want to add in here. We're getting down to the nitty gritty now. Now things start progressing more. I, the only thing I wanted to add was this that, that came to mind when I was reading this, and I went back to Luke and read the part about you know Mary coming in and, and crying and wiping his feet with her hair and, um, and I was thinking you know if this if this is a woman of ill repute um, for whatever reason she was not she was not well accepted in the community even though she may have been, she probably she was wealthy obviously because she had these you know bottles of perfume that were very very expensive um, she had a radical transformation yeah. Just, you know, and uh, what Jesus says about her in Luke was that, you know, you didn't do any of these things for me, but she hasn't stopped kissing my feet since I got here. You know, it's like he, she really was pouring out a heart of love. Um, and he, the Lord said that those who have been forgiven much are the ones who will love much, you know, and she just she just had a massive transformation. Now, was she also the woman that that had the Mary that had demons cast out of her? Because if that was the case, I could see why, why they would consider her a sin, sin person. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because kind of it have... wasn't Mary. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I thought... That's a good I, question. I thought that... Uh, I don't yeah. remember. He, yeah, he cast out a bunch of demons out of one of them. I thought her name was Mary. Yeah. It's in Luke's gospel that says that she had seven demons, Mary Magdalene. Yeah, okay. I thought it was her. So if she had seven demons, I mean, there was something in her life that was, you know, so. Maybe she rubbed thistles in her arms or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. 